Hello, welcome to Sound and Fury Book Reviews. As usual, I am Tina. Today I'm going to talk about the self-published science fiction competition, the quarter finalists in the Book Invasion team. First of all though, my apologies. I had intended to do mini reviews of all the books allocated to us, like 24 or 25 of them, but I A, didn't realize how much work that actually would be, and B, had about three weeks of revolving sickness at my house, including getting COVID, <laughs> which left me barely able to do my regular book reviews. I am still recovering. As such, I just wanted to say that I thought all your books were great, and I'm sorry to those that aren't moving forward. Of the 24 books in our allocation, I voted to continue with nine of them, so the competition was pretty fierce. <laughs> uh, Rachel already did a great post about this for our team on her channel, but I wanted to do my own video too, so I've linked her channel below, so you should watch her video. I'm going to talk about the five quarter finalists we chose, but first there are two books I wanted to mention that I voted yes on but aren't part of the quarter finalists. These two didn't get as many yeses as the others to allow them to move forward, but I really enjoyed what I read of them, so I plan to continue with them, and this is Medusa Falling by G.S. Jensen and The Galactic Zookeeper's Guide to Heists and Husbandry by A.C. Huntley. So if the authors happen to watch this, I guess that's kind of a consolation prize. You're going to be getting a full read and review by me, including reviews on Goodreads and my Instagram, likely by March, because I have to fit it in with all my other books. But I really liked your two books, and I really wanted to finish with them, so I'm going to keep reading with those two. Now, on to the quarter finalists, all of which I voted yes on, so I'm very excited these are going to be continuing on. I'm not going to read the blurbs for these because that's too much talking for my still afflicted throat. So I'm just going to say the first one is Dark Theory by Wick Welker. The world building for me for this one was excellent. I understood what the deal was, but we also don't understand what caused the world to go post-apocalyptic. We have fiefdoms and underground vaults, but also high-tech robots that people just accept but don't know how to maintain. It was intriguing and I was super into it. I'm not as fond of the pastoral post-apocalyptic stories, you know, like where there's no technology left behind aside from like a big reveal at the end. So it was great to have one where tech was still accepted and used, just not to the extent it was before the collapse. So I really found the integration of old technology with this new kind of way of living really worked in this book and it made sense and it didn't feel like a fantasy because the sci-fi aspects were so minimal. The sci-fi aspects in this one were quite heavy. <laughs> There's a robot main character, for example. The characters are likable and their motivations made sense. I don't really love any of them yet, but I mean, this is a huge book, so I think they have the potential to become really, really likable characters. The writing is quite good. Nothing over the top, but it's solid. There are a few errors and the descriptions are easy to follow and doesn't suffer from over description. This massive book was very engaging. And I look forward to continuing with it. The next one is Down Below Beyond by T.A. Bruno. I obviously voted yes on this one. <laughs> if you want to know why, you can check out my full review that I did back in July when the book first came out. Even if I had recused myself from voting though, it still had yeses across the board, so my yes didn't really impact anything. But I am going to do a reread to make a proper score for it, and I'm not going to let my alien boyfriend Vobsy bias me in any regard, I promise. <laughs> the next one is Prompt Excursion by Lewis S. Kingston. I was really excited that this one moved forward because I really, really liked the concept. <laughs> also, this is one of the first books I've read in a long time where Myriad was used properly. I've seen it used wrong in traditionally published books recently, and almost every book I edit, because i that's my job, uh, they use it wrong. <laughs> it is not a Myriad of, just so everyone knows, it's just Myriad. There are Myriad misuses of Myriad because most people don't know Myriad means 10,000. You wouldn't say a 10,000 of soldiers, you would say 10,000 soldiers. Uh, welcome to Tina's Pedantic Editing Class 101. Anyway, this was great. <laughs> the rest of the writing was solid, though I noticed a couple of spell mistakes. And there are parts where her thoughts raced that I found was kind of hard to read. I did appreciate the alien references quite a bit, though. The book also has some really cool metaphors and similes. And though it took a bit to get going, I loved the concept of this woman waking up in a spaceship and having to figure out what is going on and fix things, but she doesn't really know what's going on. I thought that was really compelling and interesting. I definitely liked the main character. I empathized with her and I was very curious about what was going to happen next. I'm really glad we're continuing with this one because if, if no one else had wanted to, I probably, I would have definitely still read it going forward. <laughs> 
The next one is Aria of the Forgotten Book One, Bloodletting by Sean Thomas. I actually talked about this one in the one mini book reviews thing I did, so you can check that out in my feed if you like. I'm very glad we're moving forward with this one because I was really intrigued by the mystery and I liked the characters and I love all the aliens and stuff, so I was really happy that this one was going forward, even though it's long too. <laughs> and lastly, we have Mortal Mission by Pip Skinner. The first 10% of this novel does not make it seem like this is like a closed door mystery, which is what the blurb seems to suggest it is, a closed door mystery on Mars. But I guess that's kind of what it develops into. In truth, while it seemed like most of my team really liked it, I hummed and hawed over this one. I was kind of like, I don't know, I like it, but I don't know if I like it that much, I'm not sure. But I am curious about it, so I'm glad that it's moving forward. The writing is very solid. It's easy to engage with and follow the trajectory, despite there being three main characters. There's a reporter, an astronaut, Nepple baby, and this weird religious dude, whom I'm not sure we're supposed to take at face value. I can't say I was particularly taken by any of the characters, but I am curious about their motives and their arcs. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not upset to have to be, keep reading this one. <laughs> so yeah, these are the quarter finalists that we're going to read by early January to decide who moves on to the semi-finalists. Again, thank you to all authors for submitting your books. I had a really great time reading the first 10 to 15 percent of them. And as I said, out of all of them, there were only nine that I voted yes on. And that's because I was being very, very particular because I'm generally a, a high rater, like a five stars all around kind of reviewer. So I was being very conservative. And if you have been cut at this stage, I hope that it doesn't deter your writing journey and you keep writing and you keep producing books and maybe you submit your books to the competition next year because you never know. So yeah, thanks for watching and I will be doing reviews, dedicated reviews of all five of these books except for Down Below Beyond because I already did that one as I said in the upcoming couple of months. So I think mainly probably more like in late December, early January, but yeah, these are all going to get their own little review. So thanks.